Do you have your coffee this morning? Are you serious? What's going wrong with our economy? Is it crashing? Quit putting a band-aid on it. Quit talking about debt ceilings. Let's really be honest with the American people. Ah, are you serious? What? Wait till I read this to you. You're going to die. Philip of Alabama, you must be feeling better. I know you had that surgery and we didn't, you were kind of quiet for a while, but oh no. Ah! First of all, the unemployment numbers are out for June. They're 9.2%. 9.2%. The unemployment's going up. Alex Jones, that's the people who's actually drawing a check. Now, Alex Jones said the real unemployment numbers is 24%. Almost one in four able-bodied, willing-to-work Americans can't find a job or don't have one. Okay? The Treasury has decided to slow down printing the, the printing presses, to slow down the amount of money they're printing. They were trying to put $600 billion into the system, just print the money and throw it in, but it's starting to raise the inflation. Inflation. You understand that. Even I understand that. And I'm a preacher from northern Indiana in the cornfields. What? And then, but at least President Obama did something good. He gave all the White House staffers an 8% raise. That's, how's that make you feel with your tax dollars? You okay with that? Are you all right? Well, you're going to die when you see this next report. I, I mean, seriously. People, there's a report that talks about how many billion dollars, how many billion dollars people are in debt. Okay? I'm talking, excuse me, let me just explain that. We already know we're trillions. This is how many dollars the balance sheets are off in the world. Now, just relax for a moment because what I'm getting ready to share with you, it's. I don't know what to do. I mean, I don't know what to say. It's This might be the most scariest report I've ever seen in my life, okay? I'm pulling it up right now as we speak. Philip of Alabama sent it to me. I don't know what he's trying to do. He's trying to get me, trying to, if he's trying to get my blood boiling, I, there's already enough stuff that's causing that, Philip, but this right here is just insane, okay? This really is insane. Uh, I, I, it, it basically tells you all the nations of the world what their balance sheet says. Okay, and there's 191 nations that gives their report, <laughs> and uh, we're dead last. I mean, there's about 60 some nations in the world that actually have a positive balance sheet. What that means is the amount of money they owe and the amount of money their nation's uh, economy generates, they have a positive balance sheet. Okay, we're not talking cash flow here. We're talking balance sheets, big difference. But the rest of the nations, out of 191 nations in the world, about 140 of them are reporting a negative balance sheet. Now, most of them are somewhere between um, a few million and let's say uh, $10 million. Okay, there's a big chunk of them that are in that number, which that's no big deal. It's pretty close to break even. Then you get into some of these countries that are really hurting. Countries like Ireland and Greece and Portugal and Spain and the United Kingdom and Canada. I'll just give you an example. Canada's $40.2 billion upside down in the balance sheet. $40.2 billion. But uh, that's nothing. America is 561 billion with a capital B upside down in its balance sheet. Now you might say, well, that's a big number. I don't know about big numbers. Just explain this to you. The other 190 countries, second to last to America, is only 67 billion. Okay? So that's the highest. Put, put Canada at 40 billion. Put the United Kingdom at 38 billion. Put Ireland at 32 billion. Put Portugal at 29 billion, something like that. But when you come to America, it's 561 billion. It's so far off the charts, 
it's so far off the charts compared to the rest of the world that there's no recovery. These guys could talk about summer of recovery. Remember that? In two th uh, president Obama was elected president, and I'm praying for President Obama, and I'm not throwing, this ain't all his fault. I mean, it's probably 15% of it his fault. The, a lot of this stuff happened under President George W. Bush. Republicans, Democrats, it doesn't matter who's in control of the House or the Senate or the White House. It really don't matter. They're all playing the same game. Borrow from China, move jobs to China, sell to the American, and tax the American people. Spend the money on everything like it just, just, what? What are they thinking? And here's the whole deal. Here's the whole deal. Obama got elected president. And in 2009, he said that this was going to be it. Uh, we have to have a stimulus bill. We've got to bail out these banks. We've got to bail out Chrysler and, and General Motors. We've got to go green. We've got to invest in our infrastructures by throwing up windmills in, in North Dakota. And we got to throw these things up everywhere. We've got to, people. we got to bail out all these Wall Street bankers with trillions. I'm talking trillions of dollars. And don't worry, because he said we also have to pass the stimulus bill. Huge amount of money. So that was the summer of 2009. Stimulus. Shovel-ready jobs. Put everybody to work. Unemployment at that time was about 6%. Then came the year 2010. Obama went around holding uh, rallies at factories and, and, and different places and talking jobs, jobs, jobs. Well, the unemployment numbers went to about 8.9%. He called it, though, the summer of recovery. The summer of recovery. By then, there was millions of Americans who drawed out all their unemployment became what's called the 99ers. Guys around my age worked 20 years, unemployment, drew every dime out, can't find a job. Then came the summer of 2011, this year. It's the debt ceiling. We've got to fix it. We've got to. We've got to borrow more money. The economy's in trouble. Unemployment's now, today, 92 for June. The Treasury has to slow down the printing presses because of inflation. Our currency, our dollar is worthless. China's threatening us. There's talk of going default. We stopped. This will be the last space shuttle that goes in space. We're pulling back on spending on our military. We're cutting down the number of planes and boats and artillery. We are hurting. Our bridges are falling apart. Our pipelines are breaking in Yellowstone. We have oil wells that are dry. We have BP oil spills. We have disaster. We have food crisis. We have floodlands and our economy. And then here comes the tornadoes and the forest fires and the nuclear fallout and everything else that's going to come up on this land. And the, what we're still running around hollering, we got to raise the debt ceiling. No, we don't have to borrow another dime. Guys, we're $561 billion upside down on the balance sheet, and we're $14 trillion in debt. We, we're we broke, we're busted, and we're disgusted. We have plenty of taxation. Oh, they want to raise taxes. No. We don't have any representation. What few senators and congressmen are up in Washington that care about us, you can count them on, the, on one hand. We're done. We're done. Read your Bible, what's going to happen to us. We're going to be overtaken. We're selling, we sold 50 square miles of Idaho to China. They're going to build their own little city, but it's not going to be a part of America. It's going to be a Chinese city in America. Self-sufficient. Is that going to help you and me get a job? Is that going to help you pay your bills? Are you going to be able to, oh, I didn't even talk about foreclosures. Record, worse than the depression. Record foreclosures. I'll tell you what America is going to have to do. Quit taking the crosses off the top of the churches. 
Quit shoving the Bible in a corner and reading the Koran. It's time that America quit killing babies. Quit killing babies. You know, you know what's shocking to me? They executed a guy last night in Texas. This guy raped, mutilated, and murdered a 16-year-old girl. When he got done with her, he mutilated her. He violated her in so many different ways, including poking out her eyes and then taking a 40-pound piece of asphalt and crushing her head. He admitted he did it and even took the authorities to the place where he buried her body, where, where she was found. He, went, he was sentenced to death, but the liberal, liberal, liberal court system allowed him to file appeal after appeal after appeal that he stuck around 16 years, and I'm talking in the heart of Texas. They were going to execute him yesterday. President Barack Obama tried to move heaven and earth to stop the execution. He asked the Supreme Court to, 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 to uh, rule an injunction, to hold up a minute, to make sure this guy was given every possible right, including international law. Let's see what international law says. Even Hillary Rodham Clinton got involved. What I can't understand, they'll move heaven and earth for a guy who kills your daughter and crushes her brains out, but they'll sit back and let 60 million innocent babies be aborted every day in this nation and no one has the guts to stand up and say it's an abomination. You know, I, I probably need to take the weekend off. I probably need to... I, I, I'm upset because Iran's wanting to hang this pastor. <clears throat> I'm upset at the lies of the media. I'm upset about the Kaylee Anthony injustice. I'm upset about the nation is so broke. All the tax dollars. I mean, if I ran for president, do you want to hear what my agenda would be? If I was running for president, here's what I would do. I would cut the, the federal government by 33%. I would let 33% of the entire, everyone that works in Washington, 33% of them would be laid off. Go, go away. Okay? I would... Uh, Cut funding to foreign nations by 90%. I would uh, eliminate all the files and documents and all the procedures that, that businesses have to jump through all these hoops and just get all those files and all that documentation, get all the red tape out of the way and just let people have their own business. People selling and buying and selling and working with one another. Cut all that out. I would abolish the IRS and create a one a flat tax, a flat sales tax of 15%. I would make sure every elderly person on Social Security got a 15% raise. I would raise the, 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 the wages of the military 15%. And I would make sure that every elderly person in this country never paid a dime for prescriptions. It would all be paid by the government. You say, well, how are you going to afford that? Abolish the IRS. Get rid of it. Get rid of 33% of the government. Get rid of the red tape. Get rid of the hanging honors. Get rid of the. Uh, get rid of them. Run them out of there. Put them on a leaky boat to Vietnam, to Laos, or somewhere. I know that was a radical. I shouldn't have said it that way. They, they, you know, they're just trying to do you know, that. How many people are in there filing their nails? You, I, for every government worker who actually legitimately makes sense, there's five secretaries filing their nails. <laughs> and that's those, those are the good people. Okay? For every one of the secretaries filing their nails, there's several fat cats in there living on high off the hog off your tax dollars. You know what? I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not political. So you notice I haven't blamed on either party. I'm not political. I'm exposing corruption and greed, and, and, and it's just wrong. You know, I've went too long with this rant. If you're not saved, why don't you send me a personal message, Pastor? I want to get saved. What I'm trying to tell you is if you got your hope in America, you need to forget it. You need to get your hope in Jesus Christ, okay, because he's coming back. There's no question he's coming back. I'm going to let you go. I, I've, I've went too far. I couldn't find this guy's email. Philip of Alabama sent me with a list of all the countries. I'm just... So, pray for me. And, and give your heart to Jesus. Really, really, really. It's coming down to just give your heart to Jesus Christ.